Good morning. It's Wednesday, August 13th, 2014, and we're in the Senator Hearing Room, 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem for a weekly Board of Commissioners meeting. We start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, so please join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item is always public comment, and I know, Lynn, if you'd bring that over, we have someone that wants to speak this morning. <clears throat> He's given us a sheet. <clears throat> Thank you. Two people, actually, it looks like. And the first is Ken Hetzel. Ken Hetzel. Uh, yes, sir. So, Ken, go ahead. I know you've been here. I was actually just thinking of this morning. You've been to meetings for most of a year, and I didn't know your name, but I do now. Thank so you. So, welcome yeah. and go ahead. Commissioners, my name is Kenneth Hetzel. I live at 745 Harris Street here in Salem. And I come today as a board member of a small nonprofit called ROCK, R-O-C-C, -C, Recovery Outreach Community Center. And I come to invite you to our 8th Annual Hands Across the Bridge event at Marion Square Park, Friday, September 5th from 2 to 7 p.m. This is a celebration for people in recovery. Recovery is a big word. Recovery from drug and alcohol, recovery from mental illness, recovery from homelessness, recover a job, we want to give people a reason to celebrate their achievements. We'd like for you to come. We're going to have Polk County join us from the other side of the bridge. We go up the bridge and we say the serenity prayer and we throw flowers in the, in the water. And we just make a nuisance of ourselves during rush hour traffic. So I just hope you all be able to come and share with us, share with the citizens that are struggling here in Marion County. All right. Thank you, Ken. If I could just make a comment. First of all, thank you for coming to all of our board meetings. I can't imagine <laughs> how uh, much effort that takes to come as often as you do. And uh, secondly, we had a presentation at the Public Safety Coordinating Council yesterday about uh, mental health services and uh, the changes that are occurring, increased access and so on through uh, the Oregon Health Plan, and one of the programs that they highlighted was ROC uh, yesterday at that meeting. So uh, it's th it, this program, along with Project ABLE, really are uh, support programs for people with mental illness so that they can uh, have peer support, uh, work with each other, and, um, and work on their recovery. It's a great program, so thanks for highlighting it. And then Sylvia Lee Perez signed <laughs> up, and I, she has left. All right. So let's then move on to our consent calendar, Commissioner Carlson. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I would move today's consent calendar. Under Business Services Human Resources, approve recommendation to uphold a pay grade for Administrative Specialist, Detective sec Section, and Assistant Legal Counsel. Approve recommendation to adjust pay grades upward for Senior Assistant Legal Counsel, Deputy District Attorney 1, Deputy District Attorney 2, Deputy District Attorney 3, and Trial Team Supervisor. Approve recommendation to reclassify Building Inspector 1 to Building Plans Examiner 2. Approve recommendation to reclassify two Building Maintenance Specialists to Senior Building Maintenance Specialists. Under Health, approve Amendment Number 1 and reinstatement of contract for services with Northwest Human Services, Inc. for $12,500 to continue behavioral health consultant consultation and specialized training through September 30th, 2014. Under Public Works, receive Hearings Officer's recommendation to grant Zone Change Comprehensive Plan Amendment Conditional Use, Case ZCCPCU Number 14-003, Portland General Electric, Clerk's File Number 5687, and schedule a public hearing for September 10th, 2014. Schedule a public hearing for September 17th, 2014 to consider Amendment Number 1 to the Franchise Agreement with the Marion Resource Recovery Facility to extend the agreement for three years. It. All right, I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Nope. All in favor then say aye. 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 A motion passes. 
We have one action item this morning <clears throat> under Public Works. Consider right-of-way services agreement with Clackamas County and a resolution exercising the power of eminent domain for the Pudding River Whiskey Hill Road Bridge Project. Cindy Schmidt, and go ahead, Cindy. Uh, good morning, commissioners. The item that we have for you today, as you described it, is a uh, right-of-way agreement with, between Clackamas County and Marion County and an attached uh, resolution authorizing the use of eminent domain. The subject is uh, the bridge that is an intercounty bridge between Clackamas and Marion counties on the Whiskey Hill Road over the Pudding River. And that bridge that's currently there is quite old. Its alignment is very curving and it's an extremely narrow bridge. And as a result, it's, it's had a number of safety issues over the years. And Clackamas County was successful in obtaining federal funds to replace it. Uh, because it extends both into Marion County and Clackamas County, there are property acquisitions that will need to take place on both sides of the river. Clackamas County is managing the project. We really um, have no obligations or particular role in getting the project completed. That all rests with Clackamas County. However, they do have two parcels they need to acquire right away from and temporary construction easements on the Marion County side. And the Marion County, or excuse me, the Clackamas County uh, Board of Commissioners does not have authority to exercise eminent domain if for some reason they're not able to negotiate effectively for those parcels. The, um, after much discussion, it was determined that uh, they would need to request Marion County um, actually uh, pass the resolution that's required by the state in the receipt of federal funds, assuring that both authorities would be willing to go to em eminent domain proceedings if for some reason we're not able to negotiate uh, for the parcels. So today we've got two pieces here. The first is an intergovernmental agreement between the two counties that simply lays out the roles of each of us in this process, and that essentially um, involves Marion County's role as just facilitating um, their acquisition of the right-of-way, Clackamas County would actually be negotiating um, through their consultant and their staff for the actual right-of-way and processing all the paperwork. Uh, Marion County would need to pass the resolution um, for eminent domain permissions in order to, for them to proceed with the right-of-way phase of the project. And uh, any costs that we might incur in assisting them with processing paperwork through this process would be reimbursed by those federal funds uh, through Clackamas County. So our role is, is relatively limited other than just coordination with their staff to ensure that things go smoothly. And we also have some language in the intergovernmental agreement um, where we'll coordinate on various forms and, and uh, if there's any issues with any of the property owners on the Marion County side of the river, uh, we want to be involved in those and we'll be communicating with Clackamas County to ensure that that goes smoothly. And we have every confidence that it will go smoothly. They have been having public meetings and have conversed with property owners about the project and the alignment has, has been uh, set in the preliminary design for some time. So there don't appear to be any uh, real controversial issues or some access issues that need to be worked out, but I think so far they have tentative agreement to, the, to what they're looking at for the project. So with that, I can answer any questions about either the intergovernmental agreement um, and then also about the, the resolution as a secondary item. So. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. So uh, thank you, Sinead. And as you were describing this project, I recall that we had this discussion a few weeks ago at Management Update. Uh, and the board's main concern was around if something went awry with the negotiations. We have Clackamas County people negotiating with Marion County residents, and you know how would the how would that be handled? So I, in looking at the language. Uh, it does say that Clackamas County would provide updates to the liaison, uh, our liaison, on the status of right-of-way negotiations on a bi-weekly basis. So you feel like that's often enough to get the information? Yes, I think it should be. And then Clackamas County will promptly notify Marion County of any conflicts or complications which arise, and you talked about that. And then, but looking back on Jay, it says Marion agrees not to act in a manner that in any way prejudices Clackamas's 
ability to secure the necessary right of way or easements for the project and generally agrees to work with Clackamas as reasonably needed in order to ensure all such real property rights are timely obtained. So when you said that you'll be involved, so what kinds, what does that look like, I guess? So if they inform you that, and I, I understand you're saying that everything sh should go okay, so I'm just thinking worst case scenario. If something does go, if you, if you get notified that there's a problem, how does Marion County get to participate in that to try to uh, work out the situation? Uh, well, Commissioner, I, I think that it could take a couple different forms. Um, first of all, we would be reviewing the, the forms and the general approach that they're going to take to the property owners, and uh, they will have appraisals of these properties, so there will be some basis for whatever <coughs> offers they're making. Um, we don't have any particular stake in, uh, as an agency anyway, in terms of what Clackamas <coughs> County ultimately might decide to settle with these property owners, unless it's something really... Um, unusual that might affect our regulations for example some kind of an agreement on building something for the property owner as part of the project that maybe isn't allowed in our code uh, those would be the kinds of interactions that we we would be looking for um, I don't know that we would necessarily uh, be involved if there's some kind of a dispute directly with the property owner but it could go to that extent if they uh, felt they wanted representation from Marion County present there we would be willing to to join them with that to to either help negotiate or just to help uh, keep keep the relationships positive there. So. so the language in that particular one doesn't preclude us from doing that. So the wiggle words about generally agrees and as reasonably needed, that allows us to have some opportunity to participate. Is that okay. correct? That's correct, commissioners, because that way if there really was something highly unusual or or perhaps uh, some conflict that uh, was of a, a different type of a nature than just the property uh, negotiation. Certainly, our public works folks could help, uh, as Cindy said, facilitate or help with discussions. If it did get to, for example, an eminent domain, if they couldn't resolve it and they had to actually file a lawsuit, you see there is language in paragraph G Mm -hmm. where uh, Marion County would be directly involved to ensure that that is handled in a proper and respectful manner for Marion County residents. Okay. Thank you. All right, anything else? Yep. And then it looks like we're to approve a right-of-way <laughs> agreement and a resolution of necessity. All right, Mr. Chair, I would move that the board approve the right-of-way services agreement with Clackamas County and the resolution exercising the power of eminent domain for the Pudding River Whiskey Hill Road Bridge project. All right, I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. Yeah. I have none, so call a question. Cindy, I got a couple questions <laughs> after we get done, so be ready. Uh, I call a question. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. I just love to put you on the spot any opportunity I have. No, you just bring up some questions that I probably should have asked you in private, but it'd be a good opportunity. And I always like to put Scott's Mills Bridge out in front of you and, and the public is, is on a list of needing repair. So my question is, uh, and, and this bridge, Whiskey Hill, like a lot of bridge with rivers as our county boundaries, uh, whether it be Lynn County, Yam Hill, I, he will poke obviously all these counties who what's the rule of thumb for who who sponsors or speaks for or applies like in this whiskey hill case for help on a project or do you coordinate with other counties and say let's work on this together or just have the list and parse them out or how, how does it work uh, generally that's already uh, been determined for each bridge that crosses between multiple agencies usually one agency by agreement is put in the position of of maintaining the structure and dealing with the structure issues so generally that agency will be the mm -hmm. one who would say apply for funds as in this case to do a replacement okay. or a major rehab sometimes you share expenses um, it, some bridges may have an agreement that one maintains the bridge but if there's a major improvement needed that those costs might be split so in this case um, Clackamas County is the lead they're responsible for the overall bridge um, in the case of Scotts Mills uh, Marion County is responsible for the overall bridge 
We have another major improvement going on. Uh, Lynn County is doing a major seismic rehabilitation of the bridge crossing Santa Ann River in Staten. And so again, that's where we have an agreement already in place that says they're the lead agency on that. Um, they would like us to be participating a little more than what we're able to, but um, they really are in the position. They've secured the funds to do the work and are, will make that happen. Would it help? In, I'm, I'm still working on Scott's bills in my mind. So one like that, would it help to get both counties uh, making applications and looking for resources to, uh, to build it? Would that make any bigger statement? I don't know that it would in the, the funding uh, streams that we're able to access for our bridges. Um, I don't even know that they would entertain um, necessary. I don't think they would have a problem with a joint application, but uh, generally what gets the bridges on the list isn't so much who applies for it or how many. It's really in terms of the uh, current sufficiency rating of the bridge and how dire its need is for replacement or rehabilitation. So those are generally kind of a quantitative prioritization that places those bridges. I just got one other thought. You made uh, Staten's being worked on is interesting, but the other one's kind of an orphan out there that, that I've tried to get ODOT interested in that kind of really blew me off was Mill City. And it just seems uh, they're going across the San there, mm -hmm. you know, weight restricted and doesn't look that good. Yeah. But uh, they didn't want to talk about it. Anyway. Their time will come eventually, Commissioner. It's just a matter of, of getting some of the... The more critical ones done first, but those some of those like Scotts Mills are slowly working their way up to the top of that list. But <laughs> which, at, which means they're declining even more. That just exactly. Sounds wrong. All right. So, Can I ask a question? Would you? Right. So uh, as we were walking in, Cindy, you mentioned that you had some good news about uh, school zone signs and flashes. Do you want to let? Commissioner Brentano know what you told me to? Sure, Commissioner. Uh, yes, the uh, Public Works is in the process right now of installing the school flashers at four of the school zones we have on our county roads. Um, those are all going, three of the four are going in at uh, fairly rural high-speed locations. Uh, we have one going in at Hazel Green Road at, at the... Um, I have to apologize, I can't remember the name of the charter school right now. Uh, there, just east of Cordon Road. Uh, one will go at the old Bethel School site on State Street, which is a half-day program on a 55-mile-an-hour road. And the uh, third one in the rural area will be at the uh, Community Action Head Start on North River Road. And then the fourth one is going to be inside the city of Almsville on 11th Street. Uh, the county maintains the road. Uh, it's inside city limits. Um, so the, our crews are in the process of putting up the posts uh, this week. They have some in already, and the flashers should be going in over the next week or so, and then we'll be testing them in preparation for school to start, and hopefully those four, all four will be up and running uh, for the start of school. Excellent. Great. It's on the paper today that Salem-Kaiser was testing all of their flashing signs today so yeah it takes a little while to troubleshoot everything and yeah. to make sure we got the most recent school schedules uh, in front of us and uh, we want to make sure that there's no no problems the minute school starts so. okay so a little bit at a time we're making progress this is yeah. good so no grant for these or anything this is just we budgeted out of our budget yeah these are ones we budgeted and had purchased the flashers <laughs> um, and we've just been trying to get the time to get our crews broken free from their other capital projects to mm -hmm. to do the construction for us in the field all so. right well tell them thank you I'm very well, excited most of these okay. like on um, Fern Ridge and State and Shaft Road uh, the solar flashers are not necessarily almost all of ours are solar installations uh, more and more, though, we're starting to run into tree cover issues to where we oh. can't. And uh, in our climate here, mm. it takes a pretty good-sized solar panel in order to power the flashers, even to just run for a couple hours in the morning and a couple hours in the afternoon. And so we can't afford any anything blocking that solar uh, power. So uh, we may find ourselves having to do some electrical installations, but we try to avoid those. Solar or electric, either way, it's so much clearer. It alerts yeah. the driver. You know exactly what's going on. Not that you still don't have to watch in school zones, but it takes that whole question of it, is it, uh, is it time or not? And I, I'm very much in favor of it. Yeah, me too. 
Yep, they're very popular. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the school's not in session at the time when the sun's shining the most, right? So. Yeah, <laughs> if we could only store all that energy up all summer. <laughs> exactly, this yeah. summer we've had a lot of it. All right, thank so, you, Cindy. Thank you. Go out and do good things. Thank Scott's Mills, that's all I can tell you. No, thank you. So the only thing left then this morning is to read the places we'll be together here in the next week. Well, let's see. Well, I don't know how that's going to happen. I guess it's going on now, so it's on the list, but obviously we're not there. We'll start with noon today to 1.30, Sedcor Economic Business Forum, Broadway Commons, 1300 Broadway Street Northeast. Today also Wednesday uh, the 13th, 3.30 to 5, Economic Development Advisory Board, the Commissioner's Boardroom, 5th floor, 555 Court Street here in Courthouse Square. Tomorrow morning, 7.30 to 9, Kaiser Marion County Meeting, Sherry's Restaurant, 4998 River Road North in Kaiser. That's followed at 10.30 to 12, Marion County Chief Administrative Officer John Latimer's Performance Evaluation. Well, to give that some thought, that'll be in the Silver and Conference Room, fifth floor, <laughs> 555 Court Street in Salem. Monday, the 18th, 8.30 to 9, Commissioner's Calendar Review, Silver and Conference Room, fifth floor, Courthouse Square, and that's followed at, by an executive session, pursuant to RS 192-6602D, also in the Silver and Conference Room. Next Wednesday, the 20th at 9 o'clock, the next board session, and that's it. Just one page. Must be a quiet time in our lives. Anything else this morning? No, just got back from a road trip, so I missed board session last week. But we made a few changes. Did I don't you? Think. I just wanted to find out what went on. But no, it was great. We went all the way from uh, here to over to Yellowstone and spent a few days there, and then up to. Calgary, Canada, and over to Banff and Lake Louise, and then back down. So in a week, we drove quite a ways, but it was a great trip. So what did you see in Yellowstone? No elk? The wolves have We got saw them an all. elk. We did not see any bears. used to see herds. herds and there were herds. tons of people there. We did see Old Faithful. And, and it was, was it on time? <laughs> they make a point to say that they, you know, they can't, they, they have ranges of when they think it's going to gonna happen, but they, it's not like... They schedule it like you go to Disney World and it's like, okay, tomorrow you can see Old Faithful at 220. It doesn't work that way. It comes I think after time. this time they can be more precise than that, <laughs> wouldn't you? It's faithful within a range. All right. so. Now yeah. I was watching a TV show on that scare you to death. That whole, whole Midwest is supposed to blow up under that. Oh. So were you worried about that at all? Oh, it was great. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right, anything else? No? Well, then it's a good time to say goodbye. We'll call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>